you, you mentioned the artificial general intelligence, um, and yeah, that always used to be kind of the Kurzweil 29, but now when I speak to people like Ben Goertzel and Mo Gaudet and all these people, they're starting, like you said, to say it could be as close as two years away. And when that happens, now you have something that can do everything better than a human. And then if it can code and improve on itself, then it starts to become something even more out of control than the black box LLMs that we don't understand now. And For so sure. in your mind, so you're it, unchecked, what would the next two to four years look like? I mean, and again, I don't want to go dark, but like if it's unchecked, what do you think yeah. this progression looks like and how does it change and expand and, and, and affect the world? I think that might be important for people to understand. Yeah, I'm very humble about uh, how hard it is to make tech predictions. You know, I and I was wrong seven years ago I, and I'm thinking that it was going to take much longer than it actually has to get to where we are now. It actually turns out to, that it's easier to get close to human level intelligence than, than we had thought. So I'm very, uh, what I'm going to say now, come, so the great deal of humility also, huge uncertainties, but if things are completely unchecked and if we're actually able to get true AGI, you know, next year and two years, that can do even AI development as well as humans. Yeah, then um, on the, according to the Metaculous prediction site, metaculous.org, it'll take about nine months or so until you get on average, until you get the super intelligence. And, and the idea there is, that if if you can instead of having humans developing the next developing better AI, if you can let the AI do that, then you can have now a, a billion virtual computer scientists who don't need any salary except some electricity. You can greatly accelerate the process of this, and instead of doubling the capability on the human research and development time scale, you know, of years, it might happen in a double in the, on the time scale of months or weeks or days or something like that. So you pretty quickly get from uh, being limited by our ability to write software to being limited by the hardware we have. And, uh, and then what, which I don't think is much of a limitation because our, our code, it's our AI systems today are, are the algorithms we use are in my opinion, so dumb that one of the first things that will happen is the AI system will figure out ways of doing much better with the hardware we have. You know, your brain can do so many things right now that GPT-4 cannot, and it uses 12 watts of electricity, right? <laughs> like a small, like a very faint old fashioned light bulb. That's how much better your software is than, than what these AI systems are. And then in a pretty short order, you can, you can also start having of course, the machines figure out how to make much better hardware. And and then pretty quickly you start getting to systems that are so smart that they're not limited by, they're limited just by the laws of physics, by what's possible. And there are also limits there. You can't send information through your AI faster than the speed of light. You can't pack in more, it's hard to put in much more than one bit of information per atom. If you try to put too much information processing too fast in a small space. There's so much energy there, it turns into a black hole. Uh, Professor Seth Lloyd at MIT worked all this out. And his answer is that you could do about a million, 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 million times better than today. And okay. According to the laws of the physics, so that's one with 30 zeros, which is way farther beyond, you know, well, our human intelligence than, than we are beyond the cockroach. So you would end up, you might end up then in the fastest kind of scenario within a matter of years, maybe five years from now, maybe three years from now, maybe 10 years, maybe go a little longer if you think tech is, is really hard. Um, when um, we are like the cockroaches among these these godlike intelligent entities that, that have been created. And uh, this is a you know a, this would be the culmination of, of a process that's been going on ever since life started showing up on Earth over a billion years ago, where things got more complex and and smarter, and then of course gradually it's gotten faster and faster, because we always use today's technology to build tomorrow. As we got the industrial revolution, things went faster. Now we're getting machines to help us with more and more. We're already having machines helping us write code 
faster than before with these co-pilot systems. And um, yeah, uh, so then then the question is, is that good for us humans or is that bad for us? And um, I think by default, if we don't solve the safety problems first, it's it's uh, it's obviously going to be bad for us. We can't compete with these things. So if we're forced to compete, we're going to lose. There won't be any humans. Um, we, it's not like the machines would have anything particular against us, but like, why are there no mammoths left? Uh, why did we? Why have we chopped down half the rainforest? It's not because we hate trees. It's just that we had, you know, other goals that weren't aligned so much with the denizens of the rainforest. And you, you know, it's just really inconvenient to have to share the planet with much more intelligent beings. And people sometimes ask me, like, how exactly would much smarter machines figure out how to kill off humanity? Well, I mean, if you ask a, a mammoth. Or if you ask the black African rhinoceros why we humans drove it extinct, you know, they couldn't have understood even how we would do it or why we would do it, right? Right. They would probably be like, we've not done anything mean to the humans. Why would they kill us? Well, how could they have possibly guessed that some some humans thought that by eating uh, ground up rhinoceros tusk horn that they were going to it was going to improve their virility, you know, even though <laughs> the medical journals disagree. How could they have guessed that, right? Or how could they guess that they were they were going to be they were going to get killed by some fast moving little piece of metal that came flying at them at high speed? They haven't when that wasn't even part of their world. If we're up against something more intelligent and it wants to get rid of us, um, it'll be in a way that we can't even imagine, and probably for a reason also that we can't imagine. The the basic point is just you no. Know, Right now, we still have the. It's within our power to decide whether we even want to build these things or not. And what I'm saying is incredibly simple. You know, let's not build them until we've convinced ourselves that they're gonna that it's gonna be good for us. People sometimes say, "Oh, it's inevitable, so we should just do it anyway." That's a conflation of is with ought and the only reason it's inevitable seems inevitable is because people aren't aware enough of of the cliff that we're driving from right it's not in the interest of hardly anyone on this planet except maybe some tiny fraction of, of suicidal people who want to take the rest with us to, to do this <clears throat> and um i'm very hopeful that conversations like the one that we're having now can, can help people appreciate that really a, it's not in our interest to build to rush ahead with with this. B, of course we can stop it if if people are just aware of 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 what's happening. And C, uh, I'm not sitting here saying that we should not get eventually all the great upsides of this either. I'm just saying, if it if you have to wait one more year to make it safe so we can then enjoy it for billions of years. That's a pretty good idea. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who wanna join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year's gonna be too late.
ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. So let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy, apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?